Okay, this is another portfolio piece that we have to do for 102 cap. Uh, this time I'm gonna draw this watch. Um, I've given you some bits, I've given you the hands that you can sort of add into it. Uh, it's a series of step-by-step -step guides but without all the information that you had on the previous one. Okay, so there is a little bit less and I'll be going through these page by page. Uh, so we'll end up with a series of videos that follow on from one page to the next. But before we go diving in, let's just have a little look at what we've got. Um, every time you see so this polar array, it'll obviously be balanced on this center point. Uh, also look for things that uh, can be mirrored or flipped. So again, center line down here, a lot of this is symmetrical. Uh, create one of these and you can flip that across this mirror plane. And then with these two, you can select these and then flip them across this mirror plane. Uh, we'll be creating text styles. Okay, so a couple of those to be positioned. You'll be given all the sort of insert points. So I'll just make sure I tidy up any uh, errors that um, have not been tidied up over the last couple of years. Uh, this thing here, this uh, shape is a polyline and then that will be offset. So again, there's a global thickness that needs to be applied to give it this sort of extra thickness. Um, lots of these bits of text, again, can be arrayed and the way in which you orientate the text can be controlled as well. Uh, this is a bit of hatching that um, we'll be putting in. This is a double uh, user-defined hatch with a certain spacing and a rotation of 45 degrees. So all of this will be uh, highlighted and talked through as we go through this tutorial. Okay, so we're gonna start off by going into AutoCAD and let's look at our first sheet. And it says, draw a circle. 18 millimeter radius centered on zero zero okay and the next bit is draw a 17 and a half mil radius centered on zero zero or you can offset to the inside 0.5 for mil so let's have a look at creating those bits so we're in autocad there's my uh, xy center point i'm going to choose the circle tool and just make sure you get the center radius and not center diameter or any other type so a center radius and I'm not going to snap to the center point. You can't snap to that unless we had the grid snap turned on. And I'm not going to turn that grid snap on. I've got um, the display grid mode turned on. And I've got polar tracking turned on. My angles are going to be 90, uh, 180 for the moment. Um, this is another one I need to check, turn on. And we've got endpoint, midpoint I'll turn on, center. Uh, we could turn on quadrant. These are quite a lot to turn on, but... Uh, for the purpose of this, what you don't want to do is turn them all on. If you clicked on object snap settings, then it gives you the option to turn all on, all the on. Really, you only want a handful of these things turned on. So we've got that turned on as well, and we're ready to go. So when it says at the top, and it says this uh, dynamic input thing, because on this bit, we've got dynamic input, which is uh, there. So with that turned on, and this highlighted here, that gives us the option to see all that stuff on the screen. So we specify center point for circle, zero, comma, zero, enter. And that's the center point of the circle. And then the radius is gonna be 18. So one eight, enter. Okay, so that's the first bit. Now the next bit is either to create a second circle based on a similar center point, and this time, if we choose the circle tool again and move towards the center, you see that green, it doesn't get any bigger if I move into it. And now I've moved, so I can't see the edges of the circle. It's disappeared. So if I just scroll back out a bit, notice it's not picking up the center snap. If I move to the edge, then come back in, it'll pick it up because it recognizes that I'm trying to select this circle. So I'll click there and 17.5, enter, and that's the second circle. The alternate method would be to select the offset tool and where it says specify offset distance, I would go 0.5 and then enter and then choose the object to offset. So it would have been the outside one and then it would have, I'd have clicked on that like so and then I could have moved it towards the inside and that would have then created that second circle. But I've created it by just drawing it from a center snap. Okay, so that's the first couple of bits. Let's now go to the second one, and this is a 15 mil radius, and then we've got an array. So we'll just go back to sort the 15 mil radius out. So again, choose the circle tool. I could right click and recent input. So 
circle. That'll do me that. Click to that to send a snap. Left mouse click and 15. Enter. So that's got the third one in. So we're now going to draw the array for this. So I'm going to create this first. That's going to be a one millimeter radius circle centered on 16.25 and zero. So zero is the y direction, 16.25 is the x direction. And then we're going to array that 12 times based on a center point pivot. So we'll go back to this and choose the circle tool again. And it's asking for the center point. So it's 16.25 comma zero that's the center point start so that positions it there and it's one enter okay so that's one millimeter radius and now we can choose the array tool so this is the array tool so it's hit the drop down and we go for polar array it's asking us to select the object when we select the object we then hit enter to say we've selected our object and then we go for the center of this array so again we need to just make sure we hover over the edge of this circle so it picks it up and then we click at that point and now it's given us um, a couple to start with this is the array tool so a polar array items 12 and enter and let's put all our items in now you can um, make these associative or you can untick this and it basically turns them into just a series of circles. Now we don't necessarily need to worry about these ones because we're not going to go in and change them later on. Uh, but if they are associative, it means that they have a, an association to each other and to its center point. So if I was then to move these about, then they are related to that center point and each other. So I can do that and I can also do this, which basically moves the angle around a bit as well. Okay, so I can move them up like that or spread them out a bit. So I can hit escape. So this is basically what I can do with these things. But I'm going to leave them associative and I can then close the array and that's that bit done. Okay, so now I've got these. If I want to go and change the array then I can do that based on the um, array modification tab that comes up when I select an associated array if these things had been uh, exploded or not associative then I wouldn't get this option so I'll just hit escape so we'll leave this one there um, we'll look at the next one which we are going to create uh, some center point circles and then these ones and then we're going to do some more arrays using a polyline marker as opposed to just a normal line marker. Okay, so it gives you a little bit of thickness and then we'll create these little boxes for the text.